Listen to those birds. People have always been fascinated by birds and bats and butterflies and all the things that have wings because people have always wanted to fly. You might have heard of the Wright brothers. They're the guys who invented the first airplanes. But you might not know that when they were younger, they got interested in flying because they loved to watch things with wings. So let's take a look at some of the amazing things with wings that inspired the first airplanes. We always think of birds as being the only things that have wings, but actually in the insect world, there are some really incredible wings, some of the most beautiful wings in the world. Butterflies come in all different shapes and sizes, stripes, polka dots. Dragonflies are some of the fastest things with wings. They can fly up to 60 miles an hour. If you want to see things with wings, just hang out near some flowers. Sooner or later, all kinds of things will fly in and fly out and fly in again because flowers produce this delicious, sweet juice called nectar. And so many creatures love to use it for food. So you'll find not just honeybees, but all different species of bees, carpenter bees, bumblebees, wasps, beetles, fireflies. All different types of things come to flowers to use them as a restaurant, a quick place to get some food. So all different kinds of insects have all different kinds of wings. But of course, it's not just insects that have wings. All different kinds of birds have wings too. And their wings are very different than insect wings because only birds have feathers. So again, let's look at a book to find out more about things with wings. Feathers are so amazing. A bird's wing is made of hundreds and hundreds of feathers, all layered together. Some of the feathers are long and thin. Some are short and fluffy. But they all work together to help the bird fly. Here are some of the wing feathers from a huge bird called a wild turkey. Look at those crazy stripes. Now feathers grow out of a bird's skin, kind of like the way hair grows out of your skin or the skin of other types of mammals. 
But birds don't have fur or hair, they have feathers. This part here is called the quill. And of course, long ago, people used to use quill pens to write with. It almost looks like it made, it's made out of plastic, but it isn't. It's made of the same material as your fingernails are. This part here, these are called the barbs, and they stick together if there's some wind and the bird's feathers get all ruffled up. They have little teeny hooks on the edge here, so the bird can take its beak and just sort of zip them back into place. Works kind of the same way that Velcro does. Birds take really good care of their feathers. They clean them, preen them every day, take baths sometimes to keep them in peak flying condition. Birds will spend hours every day fussing with their feathers. Sometimes they'll even comb each other. Of course, there are all different kinds of birds. Different shapes, colors, and sizes. Some birds have enormous wingspans. The whooping crane has a wingspan of 90 inches. A bald eagle has a wingspan of 70 inches. If you're five feet tall, you're only 60 inches. That's a lot of wing. Different kinds of birds fly in different kinds of ways. Some soar in a straight line. Some flap their wings and swoop up and down like a roller coaster. And some can simply hover in midair like helicopters. So when Wilbur and Orville Wright were planning to build their first airplane, they spent hours studying birds and the way birds flew. They paid special attention to the birds that soar with wings wide outspread. Some birds flap their wings when they fly, but Wilbur and Orville knew that they couldn't build a plane that had wings that flap, so they had to build a plane that would soar. Birds like eagles, Hawks, ospreys, vultures will soar for hours with hardly flapping their wings. So the Wright brothers designed their plane with straight, stiff wings, no flapping, that would soar through the air. But the only problem was, if the wings don't flap, how can you turn? Small birds, like robins, when they want to make a turn, they flap one wing faster than the other, and that makes them change their direction. But how do you do that when your wings can't flap? Thinking about wings, let's not forget birds' tails. Some birds have very beautiful tails, but they're not just only for show. They use them for steering. So let's go back to looking at feathers. 
wing feathers have a very distinct shape. See how this part, the quill, isn't in the middle. They're what's called asymmetrical, not the same on both sides. And wing feathers are curved. They're not flat. So that's the wing feather from a wild turkey. Now tail feathers have all different kinds of weird shapes. Some birds have tails like peacocks or roosters. This is from a rooster that don't help in flying at all. They're just for showing off. Look how beautiful and shiny they are. And they have this beautiful shape. They can flourish them up and down and back and forth. But with many birds, the tail feathers are the rudder and the brakes. They're designed for steering. You can see they're kind of flat tipped and blunt at the top. And they're really wide and flat with the quill right in the middle. And so the bird can tilt and turn it to steer or push it downwards against the air to use for brakes. So whether it's a big bird, like this is a tail feather from a wild turkey, or a smaller bird, these are tail feathers from a pigeon, the shape is the same. Feathers, whether they're tail feathers or wing feathers, have to be in really good shape for the bird to fly. That's why they spend so much time preening and sometimes even taking baths. But that's also why they grow new ones. Birds molt their feathers just like animals shed their fur. Birds molt their feather. Usually a feather lasts about a year and then this quill part it just pulls loose and falls off the bird's body. So if you find a feather lying on the ground, it doesn't necessarily mean that the bird died. The feathers just fall from the bird's body and then the bird grows new ones so that it can always have feathers in peak flying condition. Now these feathers are the tail feathers of a red-tailed hawk. You can see how they're a beautiful reddish brown color. Red-tailed hawks are really common birds, and if you watch, you may be able to see them flying in the sky. And they soar with their wings outspread, and then their tails do the steering. They tilt back and forth so that the bird can turn left or right, or slow down, or speed up. Now let's take some of what we've learned about flying and birds and wings and feathers and design our own thing that flies. Now we don't have feathers, so we're going to use something really light, lightweight, like feathers are. We'll use paper. And we want something that's got a flat, broad surface, like a wing, like a feather. So again, we'll use paper flat surface, but very lightweight. So let's do the classic paper airplane. Now you guys have, some people probably know how to do this already. So if you know a different design, you can just do your own design, but this is the basic way to do a paper airplane. First, we're gonna just fold it in half like a book. And the more precisely you line up the corners, Really take a moment to look at those corners and get them lined up just right, the better it's going to be. And then every time you fold it, go with your thumbnail or use a pen or something and just really make that a good sharp crease. Okay, that's the first fold. Now we open it up. Okay, you don't have to draw the lines. I'm just doing that so it's a little more clear. So now we're going to make like and we're making like the roof of a house. So the front corner here is going to fold down right into the middle line there. Again, really fold it down nice and tight. And do the other side.
Okay, you leave those folded. Now here's the hard part. We're going to take this, see this part right here, this little corner right there. Okay, and that part's got to come over to the center. That's It's a hard fold to do. It's kind of tricky. Like that. Fold that down. All the way down. And I make that nice and flat. Okay, now the other side. Nice and flat. So now you have that basic paper airplane shape and you can fold it even more in like this or you can fold it in half again like this. So experiment with folding it different ways. And remember you're trying for a flat, broad surface to push against the air and help your paper airplane glide. Now when we say push against the air, what does that mean? If you go like this, you're pushing against the air, but you can't feel anything. Air doesn't seem to be there, but of course it is. If we could somehow take all the air out of a room where we were standing, you, you wouldn't be able to breathe anymore. So oxygen and other gases form the atmosphere, which is all around us. It doesn't feel like much if you just go like this, but of course air is often moving and we call it wind. So when you fly your glider, you'll want it to glide into the wind and you'll have to experiment and see which is better. Do you want the wind to be blowing towards you or away from you? When you aim your airplane, you don't want to point it down or it will crash, but you don't want to point it too far up or it will stall and then just not travel very far. The Wright brothers, when they were experimenting with their flyers, discovered that it was better to take off with the wind blowing towards them, and then the wind would push the wings upward. Earlier, I said that we want to use lightweight materials, but funnily enough, adding a little bit of weight can help keep the nose down and can help make it fly further. So experiment and see what works. Try adding a little bit of weight at the front or maybe in the middle or even towards the back and see how that affects your flying success. You also may want to experiment with adding streamers to the tail, just tape some flagging on, try doing it at different angles, and then experiment. See if that helps or hinders your flight. Experiment with attaching different modifications, something light like a straw or tissue paper, something heavier like the paper clips or the popsicle sticks, and like the Wright brothers did, keep experimenting. It took them years before they developed a design they were happy with. It's also good to get some height. The Wright brothers launched their first flyers from the top of a hill. So you could stand on a chair or a picnic table or even fly it out of a window to get as much height as you can. Make a target on the lawn and see how close you can get.
Keep trying. Better. Thanks for listening, and best of luck with your own creation.